Hi, this is Dan Steinberg at Salford Systems, and welcome to this particular edition of Salford Systems online training videos. Today, we're going to be talking about CART, and this is a super fast walkthrough of some of the basics of CART. If you want to understand more about the basics, we also invite you to visit the longer and slower version as we go through the details. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to open a file. I'm going to go to the modeling dialog. I'm going to choose a dependent variable, which is going to be the subject of my analysis. Then what I'm going to do is set up a previously prepared analysis, use it to set up my model, and notice that over here I've got 10 variables that have been selected to run. I've got a dependent variable, just one, which is all we can have, 10 predictors. I'm ready to use the card engine. I just click start and away we go. What CART does is it starts with data in the root node. Here I've got 830 records, which happen to be organized as 704 zeros or non-responses and 126 responses. And I'm using the available data in order to find partitions, that is database rules, that can separate the data into two parts such that one part has a substantially different response rate than the other. And that's what I see over here. CART conducts a brute force search in order to find these splitters. Once it's found one, it repeats the process. For any node, we search for the best splitter, again, trying to get that maximum separation in terms of response between one of the children and the other, and we continue this process. We eventually end up at an optimal tree. In this rapid walkthrough, we don't have time to describe how we determine what that optimality is, but I just want to assure you that it is based on testing. So. We're not relying on the training data. We're relying on data that has not been used to build the tree in order to determine what's optimal. I'm going to look over here at a tree which is smaller than optimal, but interesting. The key in a cart display here is the color coding. Red means interesting, high response. Blue means low response. And if we're looking for the high response nodes, then of course we want to focus on the red nodes. So how do we get to the red nodes? Well, we've got two different ways of looking at this tree. We can, of course, hover our mouse over the nodes and follow our way down. We can look at a conventional picture of the tree which gives us all the details, what happens in each node. Or we can look at a very streamlined version. In this streamlined version, we can see which variables are operating. Now it turns out that in a cart tree, the way the splits work is the high values of the variable go to the right, and the low values go to the left. So whatever variable was used to split this, high values to the right. Whatever variable was used to split this node here, high values to the right. So we end up with two interesting terminal nodes. Those are the ones that we're going to want to focus on first. The extreme right and the extreme left. Doesn't have to be that way. Turned out to be that way this time. So let's look at this graph over here and let's tell the story. This particular data set came from a marketing initiative from a European telephone company that was trying to introduce the mobile phone into their market of landline customers. 
about 20 years ago. And they ran an experiment in which they made an offer to a thousand different households approximately. And in that set of experiments, they offered everyone the exact same phone, the exact same service, but everyone was shown a different price. So the idea was to try to learn how price affected people's responses and also to learn which segments were most interested in the product. And remember, this node over here was one of the high response nodes. This was one of the other high response nodes. So this is what happened over here. Even though we showed some people a high price, what we found was that if they had a large telephone bill and if they also owned a pager, then we got a very good response to our offer. Not surprising, a pager after all is nothing but a defective cell phone. When we come along, even though this was 20 years ago, with a superior technology, those people are already paying for the inferior but unusual technology, jump on the opportunity to upgrade. And that's what happened over here. What about people that didn't have a pager and also didn't have a large telephone bill? Well, that's looking on this side of the tree. Here we led with a low price, but that wasn't enough to necessarily give us a lot of response. We're also looking at individuals that have a low telephone bill, live in particular cities, and that happen to be quite young, under 25 years old. So what happens over here? We notice that the people who are the high responders are the ones that have an extremely low telephone bill. What's the story here? Well, very interesting. The story here is that we have individuals who don't make phone calls probably because they end up going home very late. These are young individuals that after work probably hang out with their friends. Perhaps they go to clubs, perhaps they just hang out at the park, but the thing is is that they show up at home very late and it's too late to make any phone calls. Now when you show them a new technology that will allow them to interact with their friends, they're extremely positive on that new technology, but with one proviso, and that is that the new technology has to be cheap. So this kind of insight into the model, which is, to repeat, that there are some subtleties here. Normally, spending a lot on your home phone bill is a good thing, and it is a good thing on this side of the tree. But we have a segment over here where things are different. We also see in this part of the tree that for certain cities, being older than 25 is good for this particular market, probably because the people over 25 have higher incomes. But there is a group of younger people that we also want to target, and those are identified over here. This kind of subtlety is something that would be extremely difficult to detect using conventional statistical models, and we know this for a fact because we conducted this analysis 20 years ago originally using classical statistical methods, and we missed some of these subtleties at that time. Later, we reanalyzed the data and we could learn more about it by using the CART decision tree. Once we've completed an analysis, there are a number of things that we can look at in order to complete our understanding of the data. These come in the summary reports. We have over here the conventional gains chart, which we can open in a new window in order to see it much bigger. We can review the variable importance list, which tells us the ranking that the model gives for the particular drivers of this particular model. And we can also go to tree details here and get a nice print of this particular tree. And of course, we just don't want to print it on paper. We're going to want to print it to an image file or a PDF, but let's organize this so that we can get it onto one page since it clearly can fit there reasonably. Spread it out a little bit. If we want, we can add headers and footers. 
we can send this to a PDF. Let's click OK here. See, one of our options will be a PDF writer, and we're OK. Once we're done with this, we can also go to scoring, and we can decide which data set we want to create scores for and where we want to save those scores, and then perhaps choose an ID variable in order to keep track of which record is which, and then just click OK, and away we go, and we've got our scored results. Well, that's a very quick and ultra-rapid overview of some of the things that happen when you run a cart tree. We invite you to come back for a longer discussion, which is probably four times as long as this one, in which we go through a few more details. And just to give you a heads up, in order to cover everything that is relevant to advanced data analysis in CART is going to take a number of hours. And in our in-person training, we normally cover this in two full-day sessions. So as you go through our videos, expect to visit a number of them if you're hoping to become a true CART expert. Thanks very much for your interest in CART and in Salford Systems, and we hope to see you again soon.